Good morning, everybody. We are here today again to do the second uh, piece of the caregiver series, survival series. The first one we did, we talked about taking care of your back, how caregivers have a lot of trouble with having low back pain, and we talked about taking care of your back, doing stretches and strengthening. Another big problem that we see with caregivers is having trouble sleep. So they have a bad night's sleep, so the next day is a problem, and then they, they, they can't carry on with their day, so they're stressed, it becomes a big troubling cycle. So today we're gonna to talk about better sleeping patterns so we can recharge and take care of the kids, or you know, even if you take care of an adult, uh, taking care of the caregivers so they can take care of the ones they love the best way they can. Uh, we're going to start by talking about uh, postures to sleep in. Some postures are great, some postures are not so great. We all have our good and our bad habits. So we're going to talk about some of the sleeping habits that we need to avoid and the ones we need to, you know, try to stay with. I'm going to show you a video of a no-no. Okay. <laughs> we're going to start with sleeping. One thing that we really shouldn't be doing which is sleeping on your belly. Uh, the neck is all stretched out, and because you have to breathe, you have to sit with your head sideways. And that, if you're gonna have to sleep on your side, is a better option. Get a bigger, tall pillow, and avoid that pressure on the hip over by putting a pillow or if the pillow is too small, you make it double, so your hip is level with your knee. And that is a tall pillow to accommodate the gap of your neck, so that way you can sleep comfortably and you can have a better night for tomorrow. So that is a no-no for us. Now we're gonna try to show you things that we wanna encourage at night, right? We're going to talk about the good patterns of sleeping. So here are some videos of good sleeping patterns. Okay, if you're going to sleep on your back, if you have a very tall pillow, your chin is too close to the chest. That is not a good option. So you want a flat, skinny pillow for that, so you have a long neck and your shoulders are resting comfortably on the bed. So, if you want to use a contour pillow, it will give you a chance to really use it for the two different positions at night. When you're sleeping on your back, you use the skinny part of the pillow so you can have a long, relaxed neck. And when you sleep on your side, you have the long part of the pillow so you accommodate the neck better. But as we were talking about sleeping on your back, you want the skinny part so your neck is long, but you also need to avoid the pressure on your low back. For that, you can use a bolster pillow or a couple of other pillows. As long as your knees are elevated a little bit, the hip flexor are relaxed, and your low back has no pressure. So you can have a better night's sleep and wake up with a more rested back. So, this is uh, another option that we're going to show here, is the side sleeping for somebody who has shoulder problems, shoulder pain. You put a pillow on your waist and you put a very tall pillow for your head, so you're, you have more room for your shoulder, so there is no pressure on the bed. And you can have, again, a pillow in between your legs. So you're comfortable and you can watch that baby, you know, doing what the baby does and you can keep an eye on your baby, but your body is comfortably there. So making room for that shoulder if you're sleeping on your side to keep an eye on that baby is super important. So just remember, if you have, if you have to switch positions at night, which you do, we encourage you to do, no, if you sleep on your side, try to switch sides through the night uh, and go to your back you know, for part of the night, but you have to have 
the pillows to help you go through the different positions with good support. So just remember, skinny pillows if you're sleeping on your back, a little fat, tall pillow if you're sleeping on your side, uh, support under your shoulders, under, under your knees if you need to. Okay, now we're talking about another great thing you can do at night, massage your neck, yeah. knee, your muscles. What? But you're gonna do this flat on your back, no pillow, There's just so point. you can relax a little bit. And that feels super yummy to just keep on massaging. And then you switch sides, rest your head softly on the bed and really play with your muscles. That is a good way to get yourself ready for a good night's sleep. Okay, so we talked a little bit about positioning for sleeping. Another thing that is super important is to not have very bright lights towards your face when you're trying to fall asleep. So if the hallway light is very bright, you might wanna put those tiny little lamps that you put just for dim light. I know because most of you guys wanna keep an eye on that baby, you wanna be able to see at least a little bit of what's going on during the night. So the recommendation is find those dim lights instead of the bright lights on the hallway. Uh, another thing that we really want to address is the clutter in the bedroom. Of course, we all have stuff that we need to have there. A lot of our children need breathing equipment, you know, uh, diapers and all kinds of feeding tube things that you might need to have medication but we need to find a way to organize it so the, bath, the, the bedroom is not so cluttered for the night so you don't have that stimulation. Even if your bedroom looks a little plain, sometimes it's a better option. Consider the color of the walls to be a little more calming colors. The pastel colors are better. For that, try to have piles of clothes, piles of to-do things. Let's say your laundry basket. If you keep looking at laundry basket in your bedroom, you keep thinking, oh, I gotta fold that, I gotta put that away. And that in itself puts a little anxiety in you and it's hard for you to fall asleep. Little simple things like that. So we're gonna try to declutter in a more practical way. It might not look like the Southern Magazine kind of bedroom, but it will be more practical for what you need. Uh, so now we talked about the, the bedroom and this, this scenario. We're gonna now talk about another big problem that we have with caregivers and children with special needs. The moms and the dads, they want to keep an eye on their baby. They want to be so close. They want to be able to monitor the breathing, the seizures, whatever something that could happen at night. And I get that. It's very important. And we have sometimes parents that tell us that, of course, the baby sleeps with me. Yes, because I need to keep an eye on that baby. Okay, so, the... You are sleeping on the very, very edge of the bed. And because the baby takes over the entire bed, the princess or the prince is, you know, has every inch of that bed. So you end up sleeping on one side of the same shoulder for the entire night. Another issue is you can hardly move because that baby cannot be disrupted. His, his Sleep cannot be disturbed. So the parents end up freezing themselves in one position and move super slow so the babies don't have to be awakened. So that is something that is stressful in itself because you're trying to rest at night without disrupting the sleep of your child. That is not very realistic because you are way bigger than your child and you need to move and you need to switch positions through the night. One suggestion that we have here, it's a no concept, it's super practical, which is co-sleeping. 
instead of having the baby in your bed with you, we're gonna recommend that you use the bassinet that kind of opens towards the bed so you can actually reach out and touch your baby for the whole night if you need to, and you can level the, the, the legs of the bassinet so you can have it leveled with your bed so he's sleeping with you but not in the bed with you so you can still move and switch positions without disturbing the baby's sleep however a lot of our children are a little older and won't fit in that so you can also try the toddler bed that can level it, it can be raised it's a crib that becomes a toddler bed but it also has a way for you to raise the mattress to level with your bed so again you will get full access to your baby without having to share the bed i know you love your baby and you need to be close to him and you're concerned about the safety of your baby but if we can keep him very close to you in a separate bed both of you are going to have a better night's sleep uh, it's not always possible to get that crib, so you might want to have the bed that you already have for your baby and use razors for, for the bed. You can buy these on Amazon. Uh, they come in a pack of four, so you can make the little toddler bed raised to the level of your own bed. That's another option. So just be creative and the thought process here is how can I put the baby in his own bed even if I have to keep an eye on him through the night by putting the bed level with my bed but I still can move and he can move or she can move without disrupting one another and everybody's happy okay so co-sleeping is a really really important thing you might have to rearrange your bedroom you might have to invest in razors or something but when you think about the long term the fact that you're gonna have better nights and your child is gonna have better nights because even though the child wants you the fact that he is not sleeping too close to you it gives him or her a chance to find his own soothing ways of sleeping and he will be right there arm's length you know you will be there to help if needed but if not everybody could have a restful night uh, so we've addressed the bedroom and the, the routine of postures for sleep. So now let's talk a little bit about routines for yourself that can help you get better into that sleeping mode. Parents in general are always on a go, go, go because there's always something to be done for the children and for yourself, and for the neighbor, and for your own parents, and you name it. So, parents of special needs kids have even more things to address because on the top of the typical parenting thing, they have unique situations that can cause them to be a little more anxious. Like, what if my child has a seizure? I'm monitoring this, we're switching medication, now we need to be on the alert for side effects. And the kid has an upper respiratory infection for special needs kids, it's a little more problematic. So anyway, there's a little more anxiety going on. So the parent of a special needs kid has that brain in very high mode. Go, 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 thinking, trying to, it's high alert, trying to stay ahead of the problems and when you live in that kind of high alert mode it's very hard to wind down to go to sleep so we end up seeing parents with very poor sleeping patterns so let's talk about things that we can do to create that sleeping routine um, one thing that we we can consider is Routines that help you soothe your body. Let's talk about what you eat before you go to bed. We know that caffeine and nicotine are stimulants. So if you and caffeine are not the best thing to do before you go to bed. 
Some foods, like the sugary foods, are not the best options before you go to bed. So, your toothbrush is your best friend when it comes to going to bed. Because after you have dinner, if you make sure you brush your teeth, you're less tempted to take chips or cookies or popcorn to bed with you. So, our goal is to avoid the foods in the bed so you can kind of prep yourself for the, sleepy, the, the, the good sleeping night. So let's consider what you could have instead. A nice cup of tea. And of course we have to think also about the fact that if you drink a lot of liquids, you're going to have to have a lot of bathroom breaks through the night. So you don't want to have a big tall cup, but a small cup of tea. We might do the English version like a small teacup. Uh, I brought here some of the things that I use. The anise is a great uh, tea for, you know, unwind and get you to calm down before you go to bed. You can find this at the oriental food stores, maybe Latino stores. The, uh, it looks like a star. Um, it's, it's like a wooden kind of uh, seed and you can make just boil the water with that in there it's, it's a great tea for going to sleep chamomile tea is always a good option and you want to have the ones that says caffeine free of course lemongrass you can actually have a, one liter of water and put a drop of lemongrass essential oil and then use that to make your teas with. That just is a little more powerful with the falling asleep kind of teas. Passion fruit tea is also a great option. So consider a small cup of calming tea, caffeine free, before going to bed. Uh, again, try to eat your dinner, have all your, your foods at least two hours before you go to bed so that way you're not dealing with that uh, heavy stomach when you're trying to fall asleep. Um, one thing that we use a lot, I, I use this, it's uh, good night sprays. I found this at maybe Marshalls or TJ Maxx or places like this. It's a very soothing spray that smells super pretty that you can spray on your pillow and that that just invites you to fall asleep. So, uh, I have my little bag here with my things that I enjoy doing. What I'm going to be talking about, some of these strategies will work for you better than others. You know, certain things that I enjoy, you might not enjoy. So you have to figure out what are the things that would make your routine so you can fall asleep, that you can prep yourself. Uh, one thing that works great is to brush your hair before you go to bed. It's like having a scalp massage, right? So if you don't have anybody to do that, just, just closing your eyes and brushing your hair can get you in the mode for just falling asleep. It, it just invites you there, that way. Very important before we even start this routine is to address what is needed tomorrow morning. Let's say, if you go to bed thinking, I need to get that chicken out of the freezer for tomorrow, that will stay in your head and you can't go to sleep. So, 15 minutes before your bedtime, address anything that needs to be addressed, let's say, get the backpack ready for school with all the diapers, the, the creams, the medication, everything you need all set for tomorrow. So you're not gonna have to worry about rushing in the morning to get ready. So anything that you can do tonight before tomorrow morning will actually help you feel more accomplished so you let go and you can fall asleep better. So anything related to you, to your other children, to your special needs kids that could be done tonight. You can do that and that will actually take some of the load off your shoulders. Um, 
Another thing that we need to really, really work super hard on is to let go of this before you go to bed. <laughs> so we normally put alarms for everything, doctor's appointment, things we have to do, the food in the, in the oven, but we very seldom put an alarm to go to bed. So my suggestion, you put an alarm 30 minutes before the time you actually want to go to bed. So the first 15 minutes you can use to address the prep for tomorrow. Let's say the backpack, uh, the food that needs to be ready, maybe get the coffee ready to be brewed in the morning, whatever it is that is a priority for you in the morning, you have 15 minutes to do that. Then the next 15 minutes is going to be your me time, your routine that will help you have a better night's sleep. We have to keep in mind, even though your kids, your husband, your wife, they all need a little bit of you, yes. But if you don't get that night's sleep the way you need, tomorrow nobody gets anything from you, including yourself. You're gonna be, your mood is not gonna be that great. You're gonna be short fused. You're gonna be tired. You're gonna go through the motions without really being there because you're tired. So this 15 minutes, it's an investment in your tomorrow. So uh, you can create a little basket like I did. And that basket can be your 15-minute basket. You just bring it with you. Some people are going to do this in bed because they already have everything set up and they have this, this little bag, bag by their bed. Other people are going to choose their rocking chair or a little corner where everybody left alone. And at this point, you want to be by yourself. You don't want to have everybody around because it's your me time 15 minutes before your bedtime. So one of the things that really worked for me is to get my face ready, like doing, doing my lotions, my cleaning of my face. And a very good trick is not to look in the mirror. When you are cleaning your face and looking in the mirror, we are super critical of ourselves. So we end up looking at wrinkles, bags under your eyes, double chin, whatever, your neck, your this, your hair, a little gray hair that, that came up. Before we go to bed, now we're feeling horrible. We feel like we are nothing. So that doesn't help falling asleep either. So find your little corner or in bed where you can actually close your eyes and enjoy the feeling of cleaning your face if that's what you want to do. So. I use just regular cotton balls and I have just this cleaning water that I that I use so I just just spray take your time and just clean your face hydrate your face close your eyes this alone feels good makes you relax you're giving yourself some time ah and you just ponder on what you can do next after you finish cleaning your face. Nothing else matters. All I want to do now is just take care of myself and I deserve it because I've worked super hard all day. I addressed the needs of my child. I went to therapy. I dealt with some behaviors. I pulled a muscle, picking up the wheelchair. Oh, that was a lot, but I made it through. So now, it's just time for me to relax, breathe in, breathe out, and don't forget your neck. Oh, when you stretch this way, oh, it feels so good. So, the skin is now super clean. Feels great. It almost puts me in the sleeping mode. So I'm getting there. So what I'm gonna use next, this I did myself. It's a roll-on that I put a carrier oil, which is I use jojoba oil, and I put some drops of lavender tea tree oil 
and frankincense. You can pick whatever works for you. I love the smell of this combination. So I just put on a roll on little bottle and I roll this on my face. It feels amazing. Ah, oh, and I can just sit here and it smells so good and it's healthy for my skin. Or you can use whatever lotion you prefer that you like has a pretty smell that works for you. And on the top of that, I put a night lotion because I need to do that. I have very dry skin, so if you want to put something else instead, ah, and just close your eyes and enjoy this. Avoid that mirror. Really avoid that mirror. Take deep breaths. Oh. The smell of these essential oils combined really helps soothe the, the skin. And I am getting ready. I am getting ready to go to bed. Another thing that I really love, and I discovered this maybe a couple of years ago, it is Burt's Bee Cuticle um, Wax. It's lemon smell, it's really delicious. And it's, what you do is you get a little bit of this wax and you put on your cuticles and you just massage them. That Oh, it feels, it smells super pretty and you can just play with your fingers. Again, this is just finding time to pamper yourself before you go to bed. And you, if you want to go more than 15 minutes, go right ahead. You know, this, this feels really good. Get, get your cuticles ready. Because I know parents of special needs kids wash their hands a million and two times a day. So the cuticles are always looking a little rough. So it's a good option here. Um, you can also address your feet, which is super fun to do before you go to bed. So I love using this pricky ball and not so inflated, a little flat works. So what you can do is really rub the ball on your feet, play with your toes, you know, there on the top of the foot it just feels good you can even put the ball on the floor and roll the ball with your feet and after you do this you can just maybe put some lotion on the feet and actually massage your own feet imagine that that concept of massaging your own foot right and that can also put you in a more quiet mode so you can get ready for that night and if you are like me and you're always super cold you might want to do this and after that put some socks on and if you have some fun socks it's even better I don't think I have fun socks today I have just but they're pretty because they're pink so these footies are good option so that will make you feel comfy for the routine of going to bed. So you can take them off before you go to bed, of course, but it just feels right. That pampering mode feels, feels really good. Um, another thing that helps, we have a million things in our mind. So let's say you have Oh, I forgot, I need to call the doctor to change that appointment. But remember, we already put that phone away. So this is no longer because we put the phone away for our bedtime routine. Ideally, it would be charging in a different room. Ideally, <laughs> because the most important people are already close to you, right? So you don't need to be, somebody else can wait until tomorrow. So the phone is already charging elsewhere. So what would work really good is for you to have a little notebook and a pen. So you just, it came to mind, oh, tomorrow I have to ch change that doctor's appointment. Just write it down and put it there. So you unload from your head into the notebook so you don't have to worry about it. 
tomorrow the notebook will be there for you with all the things that you wrote down. So then you don't have to worry about, oh, tomorrow I have to do this, tomorrow I have to do this. No, unload on a notebook and go to bed because that's, that's, uh, that's what is there for you. Um, another thing that works really good is some essential smells, smells that invite you to fall asleep. This here is called the chill pill. The chill pill is a, an essential oil that I found online. It's a combination of a few oils. I want to say it's chamomile. Let me see. Chamomile and lemon. Uh, but what it does is it, it, it gets you in that mode of falling asleep. So what I do is I get a couple of little drops here and I rub it right on my wrists. Rub it together. And, uh, it, and when you fall asleep, let's say on your side, that smell is right lingering there. And it's, it's really inviting you to, to have a good night's sleep. So little things like that can make a big difference on your sleeping patterns at night, you know? One other thing, like, okay, we're gonna have, okay, this is chamomile tea. So I'm just gonna take a sip as I go through my routine. Um, another thing that helps is to have good thoughts, right? We have a million thoughts and they are sometimes anxious thoughts about what ifs. The what ifs are not really good to help us fall asleep. So there are some little books with quotes that can really put you in a good mindset for good thoughts because we are energy. If we have good vibrating energies coming into our mind, the body feels that way and it feels more relaxed. If we have anxious vibrations, energy, thoughts in our head, the body feels that way. So our goal here is to find ways to feel more relaxed. Uh, if you have something like calendars with, uh, that you can flip, this is a, a simple one that I have, let's say today, December 13th, Friday the 13th. Let me see what it says here. So this would be something that you would read at night, just before going to bed, like food for thought, that will help you have good thoughts before you go to bed. This one says, December 13th, forgiveness and acceptance are the powers that heal us. So it might put you in a mood for, okay, forgiveness and acceptance. It is what it is. So that might be all you need to calm down and be in a, in a more forgiving mood to yourself, in a more accepting mood for what the reality is and why we're here. So just remember little quotes. I also love poetry. So I get it. Sometimes you don't have time for poetry because you are in a go-go mode. But remember, within your 15 minute prep, you can do anything you want. You can read a quote from a, a poetry book that would take less than 30 seconds. So yes, you can. Poetry is for caregivers as well. So one of my favorite books is the Tao Te Ching, the Lao Tzu. So I just basically open the book and I'm just gonna read what I just saw here. The sage remains sensitive, avoiding extremes, avoiding extravagance, avoiding excess. That might just be what I need to ponder on. Am I being too excessive on Go, 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 push myself, push myself, push myself. 
maybe it's time for me to just let go a little bit and unwind. So books, little quotes, little people sometimes just have like those little pieces that that they get with the quotes from the Chinese cookies and they, they say those things and they read them every now and then. Anything that works for you to put in that mood for better thoughts would work. Uh, another thing that works wonders for going to bed is the gratitude diary. We have a lot going on. We have lots of concerns. We have issues to address. We have what ifs about the children, what ifs about our job, what ifs about our emotional situation, what ifs about our financial situation. There's a lot of what ifs. And we sometimes forget to see the, how good things are in so many ways. So when you decide to spend some time on those 15 minutes before bed using your gratitude diary, you learn to be grateful for things that you are not looking at as with gratitude throughout the day. Let's say you can just have any any little book, uh, sometimes just a pretty cover notebook. It doesn't have to have anything, just mine. And the way I do it is just write the date so I can always revisit it later. And I'll just write three things that I'm grateful for today. And I know sometimes it's so hard to find three things because your day went south so fast from the get-go that by nighttime you're like, oh, I just want this day to be over with. I don't even have anything to say I'm grateful for. But then if you really just stop and think, there will be plenty to write. So my suggestion is you write three. If you make a commitment to write three things that you're grateful for, sometimes it could just be, I'm grateful that I live in a, in a state that is not freezing cold right now because some other people are dealing with 20 degrees right now and we are not. So it could be just something like that. I'm grateful for the smile that my child gave me today. I'm grateful because I had money to put gas in my car to go to all my appointments today. Sometimes that's all you can muster. And there will be days that you're like, oh, I'm so grateful my child was able to sit by himself today. Yes, I'm grateful he was able to chew and swallow three times during the feeding therapy that we had. We have moments that we need to consider, you know, yes, in a big scheme, it might not sound great for other people, but this is about us. It's not about the other people. It's about where I am today. And everybody, people, 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 we all have things going on. We all have issues that we deal with a little better and issues are a little harder for us to deal with. So we all have our struggles, but we all have something to be grateful for every day. So when we make this a habit, it's amazing how when you look back, you see, oh my gosh, I remember that day I was feeling miserable and I found these things to be grateful for. So when you look back at your diary a month later, two months later, a year later, you're gonna remember, oh, I remember where I was. I was having a hard time, but I still made it gracefully. I still found a way to do it with the best attitude the best way I could. So these are some of the strategies and you will come up with your own, you know, as, as you try to establish your bedtime routine, you will come up with your own. Some of these things that I showed here might not resonate with you and others you're going to say, oh my God, this is great. It's going to work great for me, but it takes trying them. It takes exploring. Sometimes it's not your face, sometimes it's more in the neck or in your neck. Sometimes you might want to use this ball instead of doing what I did with the foot. You might just want to roll on your neck, on your shoulders. You know, it, sometimes that's all you need. Do a little bit of neck exercise 
and or roll on your hands, you know, anything that calms you down. Um, another thing that we want to talk about is the fact that sometimes there's so much going on that she'll still say, wait a minute, I'm always having trouble falling asleep, but I can't pinpoint what the problem is. So we have something called the sleep routine diary where you can, we're showing that right now, um, you can actually write down what you ate, what time you went to bed, uh, how many hours you slept. It will give you a pattern so you can actually find out what is causing you to have better sleeping patterns based on, oh, okay, every week that I ate this late or I had caffeine this late, my sleeping was not so great. So every week that I had, that I finished my, my meals three hours earlier or two hours earlier, I, I slept better. So that will give you clues on understanding why certain things work for you it might not work for somebody in your house, but it works for you. So you have to find out your own sleeping patterns. And this uh, diary uh, would really help you come up with your patterns so you can plan and avoid the things that cause you to have a bad night's sleep. Now, we're gonna do all this, right? We're gonna set up the bedroom so well that it's soothing for, for us and, and inviting for us to go to sleep. We're going to have the child co-sleeping. We're going to sleep in the good postures. We're going to have the right pillows. We're going to be creative with organizing the bedroom so everything is super calm and the colors are soothing. We're going to have all this little basket with your sleeping routine. And we're going to have a diary trying to figure out what are the pitfalls, what are the things that creates a problem in our sleeping pattern. And sometimes you go through all this and you still cannot fall asleep. It's like, what's wrong with me? It takes practicing. You cannot give up on this because I have news for you. You're going to have to do everything you did today again tomorrow. So your chances of doing tomorrow without a night's sleep are slim. So we're going to have to keep on trying to do better and tweak, tweak our patterns until we can, we can find something that really works for us. But when everything else fails, I'm going to show you a couple of things that you can try to really fall asleep using the neurophysiological patterns that you have, that you can look up. I, I'm gonna give you some information about the, the, neuro, the neurophysiology behind this. Uh, the cook hookup is a, a technique that you, you use to calm the thoughts, the emotions, the part of your brain that deals with emotions is the limbic system sometimes it's in high alert because of the way your day went through so let's say you not none of this is getting you ready so i'm going to teach you the, the cook hookup which is just uh, a technique to fall asleep better to calm the emotions in your body so you're going to cross your ankles cross at the ankles cross the right leg over the left the right arm over the left, the backs of the hands together, and you're gonna flip the hands over, clasp your hands together, and bring it to rest on your chest. Your feet can be on the ground, and you're gonna be super relaxed in your chair. Your tongue is gonna rest right behind, right on the, on the front teeth, behind the teeth, on the roof of the mouth, right behind the front teeth and you're going to take deep breaths right here as you take those deep breaths neurophysiologically your body starts to calm down it is you don't have to do anything about it it will calm down on its own 
even the tone of your voice feels like lowering down. You can be here for as long as you want. You can even fall asleep here. You can do this laying down in bed, okay? And you can just deep breath in and release. Let's say you are at a doctor's office and you're feeling anxious because you're gonna go for that appointment that they're gonna talk about maybe having surgery. And, you know, your kid is, we're gonna reassess his hips. We might suggest surgery. And you're like so anxious with just that possibility. So you're at the doctor's office, just cross your leg gracefully, cross your hands gracefully, and just sit there and breathe. Pretend you're just cold. Nobody will say that you're crazy. Just deep breath in. So this is a wonderful strategy for you to use wherever you are. So just remember, this is a way to calm the emotional system that is controlled in your brain, but it responds with the body. So use that at night as well. When you really need to calm down to fall asleep, I have another strategy. When this fails, we have something called the elephant walk that you can do to help fall asleep. You stand up. If you can't fall asleep, just stand up. One hand is the trunk, one hand is the tail, and you just go side to side. The neck is soft. You come back on the tippy toes on each side as you go. Keep your eyes closed, go, go. You can do this for like two minutes. Keep your eyes closed. And as you stop that, you take a deep breath. Keep your eyes closed if possible. Get back in bed and go into the cook hook up again. You know, like we talked about this, this, following the elephant walk, you do your cook hook up and stay here, breathe. And by now, the little chill pill essential oil is still there with you, so you can be here. Deep breath in, go, let go. And remember, your child is not being disrupted. He is ready for you co-sleeping on the, on the bed next to you. So these are just my thoughts and my experience in falling asleep because I also have my own times when I had to go find ways to fall asleep and I had to find my own strategies. And I see a lot of parents dealing with that and I truly hope that you guys will try some of these strategies and give me some feedback if it worked for you, if it didn't work, if you need me to show you again some of the strategies, if we need to do it one-on-one, -on -one, I really want you guys to succeed in having a wonderful night's sleep so the next day you are recharged and ready to take your day gracefully and address the needs of your child the best way you can. I thank you all for being here. Thank you for your time. I had fun with you.